Welcome to CTV Sports and the sixth game of the World Pro League 2024 Palm Beach Open, where we have Aspen Valley going up against Travieso. And coming today from uh, field number three, there you have it. A very good uh, aerial shot there. Slightly cooler than the last few days, just a mild 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, it looks like we have some amazing players ready to take the field. Let's take a look. So here we go then. Second match for both of these two teams, Aspen Valley. Remember in their opening match, they uh, lost to Audi by 10 goals to 15. And Travieso, they, uh, in their opening match, they uh, narrowly beat Senfest 10 goals to nine. And what's interesting about this game, of course, which is always nice and it gives it a special twist, we've got Teo Kaye playing against Anthony Kaye. Yeah, you got a Teo and Tony. And right there, there they are. It gets easy to keep them apart. As Teo has the gray helmet on there, and Tony has his special, actually skulls. It's called a crossbone type helmet. If you look, get a really good look close at it, it looks like a checkerboard, but it is skull and crossbone. I had an opportunity to check it out really close. And we get a close-up up in here. Yeah, see how it is? Pretty cool. Two uh, fantastic, fantastic players. Uh, like I said, it's a family tradition with the Kaye family, and uh, they all play polo. Um, Mom, Wendy, sits in the middle of this one, she says. <laughs> She'll choose any sides when the boys and, the, and uh, Papa and the boys are going at it. So, but it'll be a fun game. They, 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 uh, they're they very competitive, and it's great to see them. And, and I was talking to Teo. Well, we, we were, Yan, as uh, Teo was in here. Mm -hmm. And CTV Studios, and I uh, was talking about the strings of horses, and they're very, very particular about that. They have their different strings, and uh, sometimes when they're playing together, you know, they can't do it now because they're playing on different teams, just the way the rules read. Um, but when they're playing together, they will flip them around based on the team, or if they get in a game, and maybe they have to go to an overtime, and they might play, if there's another, you know, they might play, bring out some of the, the machinas, as we call it, and if one of their horses suit each other, but they do have their own, their own, uh, their own strings, as most of the families, yeah. and the Gansey family, too, they, Grant, and as in, Melissa has, you know, her special string, Mark has certain ones he likes to ride, and, uh, you know, most horses, uh, most players in the game of polo, you know, they, they like different sizes and different style of horses. So uh, it was cool to hear that. And both mounted very, very well. I think where we saw Teo actually started the season in the All-Star Challenge. Right. Then Tony came in and and the founders hit and hit it hard, came in very, very strong. And now both of them are playing here in the uh, World Pro League Palm Beach Open. So good luck to the to both teams today, Aspen Valley and Travieso and the Calle family. So here we go then, just waiting for uh, one or two more players. Uh, there they come. 
Uh, I can go through the thing real quick, uh, Yan, while we're waiting around for you, the few players. Remember, we do have our, our challenge system in place as we get their final words there from the umpires. Both teams will receive one challenge per half. You need to use it or lose it. You challenge any play, ball placement. And uh, we have our third man slash IRO instant replay official here in the CTV studios. Also, all the triggers are in place, and we've been seeing the triggers used. We saw a lot of triggers used yesterday in yep. a very tight game. Very. And a kind of game that you triggers would come and play because it was a very controlled game. Yep. We saw a lot of uh, speed control, something not the open style speed control, but tighter, which was kind of fun to watch yesterday. Uh, between Maltese Falcons and Pilot. Pilot pulling out the win at the end. But uh, they can use the trigger, check to see if goal is scored, in or out. Check to see when the ball goes over the end line, over the sideline. And, of course, check to see if a safety, penalty six, where defending team is to go over their own end line. And uh looks like they're going to line them up here again. So you want to go through and uh, go ahead and give them a – oh, taking a picture. They're going to take a picture. Cool. That's good. Nice picture there. And uh, does a right. team pitcher? <clears throat> that makes sense because got the the father, guy, the father yeah. and son yeah. going in yeah. there. And I said, I guess it was, I don't know if they had dinner together last night, but I should ask Sir Galtoni and ask them because they will go at it right away. Uh, remember the uh, final triggers is the umpire trigger, where if the umpire do disagree on a call, or they do have a tight call that's not easy to read, then they have the ability to uh, send that to our uh, IRO. Instant replay official who uh, has done doing a fantastic job. Absolutely. Breaking nice. down a lot of plays, yeah. as they said. There's some games you don't see anything happening. Some days you uh, do. And yeah. that's the way it is. It's there for the players and the game if they need it. That's all it is. Everything's about. Here we go. On the move. And uh, the first pickup here on that throw in by the light blue. Just to remind you, Aspen Valley playing in the light blue shirts and Travieso in the dark jerseys. And uh, here he is, number two. Tomacho Pierres, as you know, dealt one of my favorite uh, six-goal players, a workhorse, extremely talented. And um, let's see how he fares here today. Of course, he's uh, got a, a member of the family, Gonzalito Pierres, playing on the opposite uh, side. So we've got uh, a family affair throughout here in this yeah, match. I forgot about that. Yeah. We had the peers, the cousins anyways, but yeah, and they play hard against each other too when they when they team it up. On a move, on the far side, Teo Te and Tony. Yeah, and he gets it over the halfway line, but um, that'll now be picked up by um, the nine goaler. There he is, Juan Martin Zubia. Very, very strong, uh, a very, very uh, intelligent player as well. It'll under the next shot. He's had a few uh, goals of the game, most yeah. in, has he? And he, I keep, he is a uh, fantastic player. I can wait till he he gets his no, his ten, which he uh, is on his way. He, for me, he plays it now. On the move right here, nice pass here. Ooh, and I thought maybe Poncho would leave that, but it pounced out. I guess he just got caught there, so he figured he wouldn't get caught. Uh, so coming across in front of anybody, better to go to the ball, make a play on it. It's kind of a tough play for Pancho. Remember, Pancho had an injury. Yeah. And uh, Martin Hauregi came in and played fantastic for him right away. Um, and we knew that would happen because Martin is ready to play every day, every day, any hour. But uh, so we'll see. He doesn't have any issues here today. I saw him the other day on Sunday. He said he was okay. So we'll, we'll just keep an eye on him. Once again, then picked up here by Kaye, nicely high in the sky, but uh, slightly overcooked that one. And, uh, of course, both of these teams coming in of 26 goals. For Aspen Valley, Teo Kaye, one, Pancho Benzadon, seven, and then the two nine-goalers, Gonzalito Pierres and Juan Martin Zubia, both of nine goals. Speaking of uh, Zubia, here he is. Nice and big on your screens. Leaves that one behind. For the number three, Gonzalito Pierres. And he's also uh, been having an absolutely fantastic World Polar League season so far. And Dale, this is, as he, uh, he was saying, this is our sixth match of the tournament. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we've seen some absolutely phenomenal polo. Yeah, no, it has been just every year it's gone to another level. And uh, we were very excited here about the sixth season. Last year, I thought it 
complete, went to a whole different level. But we have seen fantastic pole. And just the, these right here, these amazing four-legged athletes on the move right here. Both teams still trying to get a – kind of figuring each other out a little bit. They line out so similar, yeah, these teams on their offense and defensive styles. So it's going to be see who just gets the breaks. On the move, going to be Zubia. And he will take it over towards the boards. In comes Ben Sedan to just uh, give him a little bit of space there for him to do his thing. Turned around nicely. Once again, I uh, couldn't control it. Picked up there nicely by the uh, Travieso team. Over on the far side with the number three, Pipe Vecchilino. Ooh, a little contact there. And uh, well, it looked like uh, Juan Martin's going to get up on the handlebars. Good riding here. Let's see if this line changes or Pipe's got control here. And it's going down the field now. And... Keep it behind. See, keep behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah. too tough luck there. Uh, we'll let him work this one out. See what the umpires decide. But, yeah, I mean, you can see Juan Martinez Bio had control there. I don't think Pipe saw him, and he was looking to the left, and then he's trying to pull out to the right and uh, so they don't make contact. <clears throat> They're going to keep it going here. Probably 5A, right away violation. Uh, we still got a little time before the courtesy change. Outlet pass, Gonza. Yeah. Subia across the field. Yeah, didn't quite come through. Vecellina gets a piece of it, and all of a sudden, they're on the move again. There he is coming in from the second row. Vecellina sending it up to the front door. Good touch by Nero. Has a man on, and I think we're going to see that a lot here in this game. And I remember that... Um, Travieso 1-0, Aspen Valley 0-1, so they're going to push everything they can. They need to pick up a win here. Now it's left for Tomacho. A little bit too slow on the break here. And Aspen Valley once again have possession. Nicely taken downfield over that halfway line. Plenty of space. Nice, cool, calm composure. Ben Sedon. Little cut shot, and there it is, the first goal of the match going on the account of um, Pancho Bensadot. Yeah, so it's good. See, Pancho looks like he's back up to the speed from his injury, and another uh, player when he gets out in front, he has been fantastic. We're in the two, and uh, look at that shot. Pretty shot there by Pancho. He, he's wearing the two, but remember, the last couple of teams played out, he played where the yeah. four. So showing you the uh, how versatile uh, Pancho is. Uh, I think back in the days, always was always uh, when he was coming up. I played against Pancho when he was four goals, um, believe it or not, and I was one goal. And for the U.S. team in Santiago, Chile, during the World Championships, he played for Argentina with Lucas Criado. Right. Uh, him and Lucas were the were the big guns because it's for fourteen goal polo. So the four and five goalers are the controllers of the team and i think uh, lucas was five and he was four and man whoo they were <laughs> that's the first time i saw guys go down the field and, and keep the ball in the air more than it was on the ground and uh it was a lot of fun but that's the first time we met and he's always been that 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 number two you know even when he played a lot of polo with uh white birch and mariano Agueti, uh -huh. and uh he was the number two in front of mariano so that's I would say I don't, we got to we got to ask him what his what his favorite position is, but you know that he, he plays the four at such a high level. I think a lot of those players that play in the front once you put them in the back, then it gives them a lot of time to read. But you know how many times he ran through and scored goals. So Indeed. I like him at the two. Well done, great goal there by Pancho. So here we go then. Quick courtesy change. Players are back out on the field, and it's going to be Tomacho Pierres for Travieso to get things moving. Little backhand shot. As uh, Pipe Vecellino now, he, of course, uh, is another very, very solid player. Also, I uh, got to know him and see him play a lot last year, playing at all levels. Um, played with quite on Z. Uh, picked up now by Kaye. Travieso, once again on the move. Oh, nicely done. He was looking for Tomacho. Uh, but Tomacho might have just fringed that right of way. We'll wait and see what the umpires make of that one. There's definitely a whistle. Yeah, he just comes around there, and just good read by Gonzalito. Almost gets it done here. Open back shot, everybody turning. And right there, gets across and gets the back shot off, though. 
Nice to watch. He's been having a great season. I saw him. I got to see uh, Tamacho on Sunday after the game. Mm-hmm. He was out there with uh, Lupe and Mia, his daughters, who play and are very uh, strong players, not just on the polo wheel. And uh, by the way, we got to remind people, remember on every, on every Sunday that we do have the yeah. Oh, Wheels, and there's been some fantastic games. Now, remember, they are after the trophy presentation, so you need to stay on air or because you need a little break in between the trophy presentation. But just to remind people, Yan, because, uh, Dan, I, I came out there after cooking the studio and the game, I saw it was, wow, went to a whole nother level. So keep an eye on the, on the uh, Polo Wheel and those games on Sunday. So a little over two minutes left to play. Just that one goal so far by Pancho Bensadon. And as you said, Dale, team still sort of uh, sizing each other out here, getting a sense for how the ponies are running today. We're coming from uh, the Immaculate uh, Field number three. Here another re uh, replay of that last uh, play. Uh, you can see it quite clearly there. Just yeah, good angle there on it. <clears throat> now... We're going to talk about it. Long shot, a lot of distance. So I might be having a little chat just to make sure the uh, distances are correct. And remember, we always have the luxury, as we say, of all those different angles. And, of course, to the umpires who are positioning themselves. Actually, umpires c cutting the field in half. If you take the goal and put a... Uh, Put a check mark in the middle of the goal, field being 300 yards long. Each umpire has a, a, a side that he stays on. Most umpires will uh, agree on who takes a 50 50 ball if there's something in the center of the field, but always has one player behind the ball and one umpire on the side of the ball. And that's so they can get different looks. You yeah. don't want two umpires riding down the field no. side by side looking at each other. No. We don't want to sit like you and I yeah, and do in the studio here. We want to be. You know, one in front, one behind. Yeah. And that's why they break the field in half on the you know, long ways. Of course, cut it in half. You will get the open goal penalty two here, or three, right away violation. Gonza, <clears throat> no problem. Gonzalito has been uh, very strong on the uh, open goals. And that puts uh, Aspen Valley, <clears throat> excuse me, in the lead by two goals to nil. A little over a minute and a half remaining here in the opening chucker. <clears throat> and by the way, the umpire team. Oh. Very well. As a, as a team, because they mix it up. Yeah. You have different umpires working together. And they work different combinations, but the uh, applause to the team. have been working very hard. Throw in. Picked up now by the 10 goaler. Juan Martinero. Couldn't take it uh, down the field a lot further. In comes Ubiya. And uh, he straight away gets a little visit there from uh, Pipe Vecellino. Near side backhand, nicely done. Looking for Kaye, intercepted. And uh, once again, picked up by Aspen Valley. Over on the far side. Everybody now move, uh, moving into uh, Travieso territory. In comes Kaye. Left behind, picked up by Vecellino. Echelina sends it up to Juan Martin Nero. Now then, this is the one-touch polo that we like watching so much here at the World Polo League. Calle Jr. this time. Not able to control it. Sent back down the line. But only as far as Nero. And uh, yeah, there you have the other. I was going to say the other Calle. And they're rotating at a high level here, Yan. Both teams, if you notice, there, you can't, yep. there, I can't tell which player is which. Yep. <laughs> if they didn't have the different helmets on, I mean, they are just flying around the field. Nero could go for a long-distance shot, and he does exactly that. And, oh, uh, yeah, nice just try. wide, just wide. I think it might take us to the end of our first chucker. So, great polo, five chuckers ago, and, and by the start of it, already looking 26 goal style at a high level. Stay with us. We'll be back.
So a great commercial there, the Boca Raton Club, and uh, an iconic club, 1926, unbelievable place. Um, embrace the exclusive uh, Boca Raton Club lifestyle with luxury meets leisure in South Florida's most iconic resort. And Fenton. I got it, Deanne. I grew up in Boca Raton. I actually worked for the, the club as a college student in many different areas of the club. Uh, my favorite part was the beach club because actually the club you see there, they also have the beach clubs right down in the middle of Boca Raton. Unbelievable. Golf courses, everything just to a top level. You, if you're in the area, you need to go down and and uh, and check it out. It's just a fantastic place. <clears throat> Unbelievable. And uh, you've got great memories. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, Dale, you keep telling me about all these places you want to take me to. Take I know. Me. I know. I will. We will. We will go. We are definitely going there. But uh, yeah, we want to thank uh, Booker Tone Club for being a part of CTV Sports also. But I, I urge you, especially if you're in the area, because it is, uh, you, it'll be an unforgettable experience. All right, here we go. Back to our second shocker. If you're just joining us, welcome. Aspen Valley in the blue jerseys. Teo Kai, Pancho Benzedon, Gandalito Pieres, and Juan Martin Zubia. Uh, two quick goals or one penalty, two, and, a, and a, a one by Pancho and, and uh, Gandalito from the field. Uh, two goals until they get there, two. And then Travieso with Tony Calle, Tamacho Pieres, Pipe Versalino, and Juan Mar Nero in the dark jersey. And um, Zubia there just uh, taking that ball across. There you see the uh, reason for that whistle. Michelino uh, coming in. And uh, that's going to go in favor of Travieso. And the man himself will be taking it. 5A? Well, Yep. I in, in range, right? Yep. About 100 or so out? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll probably go for this one. Oh, look, 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 look. It might just come in on the inside. Oh. <laughs> wow. He, he, he powdered that. That's a center. Yeah. That, that one. Remember the two point conversion available if you hit it on beyond center. Of course, in place and the buzzer beater. If you hit the ball before the second horn and it travels off the field through the goal. <clears throat> I mean, Wam Wammer Zubia tried to, to volley that one out of the air. He did. He, he did. thought he, and he knew where he was play, placed, placed or where he was uh, set up on the field. So he thought it was going in too. So Zubia once again gets the ball back off Pierres. Juan Ma. Juan Martin Zubia. Going to try and outrun Kaye. Uh, in jumps uh, Michelino. Nice little backhand, and he's fed that ball beautifully to uh, Juan Martin Nero. Felt it coming, looked like a set play. Takes it a little bit out to the left. Let's hope he can keep it in play. And work that one in. Near side back, just coming in from uh, Ben Sedon, but back to Nero. Still the 10 goaler. Just looking for that little gap where he can take a shot. There it is. And uh, no mistake for Mr. Tangola, Juan Martinero. And a huge goal at this point in the game, just getting the first goal. Good control play here by Juan Martinero. Mar and I love seeing Juan Martinero goes forward. This team uh, really gets going when the number four it starts taking it to goal, shooting it, now showing you his control. Just very calm and relaxed. And then finding a, a gap between all those horses' legs. Perfectly hit. So that gets them off on the uh, score sheet. And it uh, looks like it could, uh, oh, I was going to say, could continue there with uh, Tony Kaye trying to pick up that ball from the throw-in. There he is again. Kaye versus Kaye. Tony on the right. Teo there on the left. Nice little open backhand. Still all happening over on that halfway line. Yeah, he knew he was coming down the line, Juan Martinero. So, Zubia goes back in defense. Near on the boards. Leaves it for Vecellino. Vecellino tried to put a bit of a spin on that. And uh, Juan Martinero will get another shot. It's deflected. Oh, very much on the handlebars once again. Vecellino up against Pierres. And Pierres can pick up that ball. Try and get a little bit of space. He's done well. And there is the pass, the give and go. Zubia, but uh, this time, Tomacho Pierres. 
will just get there ahead of Kaye. Over on the boards. Nice pass once again to Juan Martin Nero. And he will now be looking for Tomacho Pierez on the near side. Wow, oh, what a yeah. great goal. Yeah, and he who, who started that play? Exactly. Because <laughs> remember, they were going for the give and go, and Tomacho actually broke it up. And then he finds Juanmar, and then look at he just comes flying in from behind, and, and great horsepower here. Me amounted to by the Santarita Polo Farm and the Santarita breeding operation, and man, what a beautiful horse there. Tomacho Pieres escaping tail, but then having enough power to put Pancho on his hip and finish on the near side. Yeah. Ah, great goal. And a nice pass here by Juan, Juan Martin. Juan Mar. That takes to our courtesy change, two to two. Beautiful pole to watch. Yeah. Wow, it opened just everybody. I don't think we've, we've only had it, well, we had the penalty two at the beginning, a couple five A's, but these both teams using each other. A nice shot here of Tomacho Pieres. <clears throat> Talking to him a lot about what he does in the middle of the game. We're seeing, we were seeing him score goals there, but I was talking to him, and I, you and I, I told him you and I were just blown away on how many plays he was making in the middle of the game. Yeah, yeah. As you say, he called it dirty work, but it's actually the, the clean work. Yeah. Um, and the hard work. And the hard work, yeah. <clears throat> With the ride-offs, the hooks, the bombs, freeing up other people, uh, getting like that, making a little defensive back shot, and hustling to the next play, and uh, just doing a tremendous job in the middle of the field. Playing, playing number two like his daddy did. And I had daddy, Zafonso, is one of the best number twos in the world when, in his, during his time. When Gonzalo, Gonzalo's dad, mm -hmm. played three behind him. Of course, for uh, Las Padanas, yeah. you know, where they had Carlos Garcia playing the number one and Ernesto Trotz playing the number four. Dynasty team back in the day. One of my favorite teams back in the day. That's when Gonzalo came over. Gonzalo's father played with John Oxley. Mm -hmm. And we talk about Boca Raton Club and at the Royal Palm Polo Club, which we talked a lot about during our Seber Memorial. Is that's where they played yep. Seber. That's right. Now the defunct, of course, club, but a lot of history. Here we go then. Picked up a Kaye. And that could be a break here for Aspen Valley. Teo Kaye with a cut shot towards goal. Vecchellino will try and hook him. Kaye, uh, unlucky there. And a cut shot back from Nero to Vecchellino. Takes it in, in, across and in front of his own goal mouth. Always a risky play. And uh, back to Tomacho. Now then, who is he going to pass it to? Yeah, he's got a man on. Just wanting that little bit of extra space to make the right play. Tomacho, near side. I beg your pardon, a little under the next shot. And it's picked up by Juan Martin Zubia. Once again, here he is, Kaye. Vecellino. We'll stick with him as long as he possibly can. Kaye taking it around the outside. Well done, Teo Kaye. Now then, on the approach, a little cut shot. Yeah, a little bit too much on that, uh, on that play. And uh, the man is marking him. There he is, Pipe Vecellino. Pick up that broken play. But uh, as you can see, Aspen Valley. Oh, cheeky but effective steal. Or was it effective? Mm. And take a look at it. Gonzalo was behind it. He thinks he was clean. Nice ride off. Get our look at it. Are they still overlapped or does he give him a good ride off? Mm. You know. I'll have to check it out. A number of things going on there. Might have the ability to challenge here. We'll see what they want to do. Again, beautiful pole. Just so smooth. I love uh, Teo's pony. The uh, Dark Bay pony. Yeah. No, he's doing well. He's doing well. Yeah, they're, they're going to go ahead and challenge this call. And I got to agree with the I got to agree with the call here because he kind of took him in front. And remember, yep. they still were a little overlapped when he stole that ball. And uh, Pipe did not really check enough. Remember the whole play when the check and go, yep. you would need to have the window opening a little bit. It doesn't have to open a lot, but it's got to open. And remember, if it's opening in just a little bit, then you, it's there's no danger. 
But if it stays even or stays over a little bit overlapped, and you know, yeah. you could, they yeah. could have they could have even went with the, a little bit of in, in the front, on the on the uh, on the right up. Maybe maybe Juan, Juan Juan Martin thought that that Tipe came over, you know. But by the looks of it, it looked like a, a good call here. So they're gonna lose their challenge here in the second chucker, and uh, Aspen Valley. And Travieso will retain their challenge. It's going to be Pipe from the 60. Uh, not quite uh, ideal. It was high, but just not straight enough. So it stays two goals apiece. And we have a little over two minutes left to play. Juan Martin Zabia been bringing in most of the, uh, the shots from his own back line. And um, also, as we've seen, those two play very well together. Gonzalo Pierres and Juan Martín Zubia. Very, very strong. 18 goals between them. Nine apiece, of course. Calle. Yeah. Sent back by Juan Martín Nero. Nobody home for Travieso. Zubia will decide to leave that one for Ben Sedon. Back to Zubia. In comes Pierres for a challenge. Ampa says play on. Oh, a little bit of a mistake here. And uh, let's see if they can capitalize on this. A little bit unlucky. Nice play, Tail. <laughs> to get uh, one more team going forward here. Super hook here, right here. This little play right here, yep. right here. Yeah, tail just makes a little bit of a play. The, the push along, one more team, and they come together. Oh, and you see how the, yeah. the, the follow through. And uh, they've been very consistent on this call. <clears throat> the follow through. Remember when you have two players overlapped. Again, it's overlapped. And they need to be overlapped because if a player comes in at the last moment, then the player swinging will not be called on that. But if the players are overlapped, they got to be in control of your mallet. So they get the open goal penalty too. Go dangerous use of the mallet, but you know it's not a lot of danger there. Just uh, got to be careful when, when those players are riding next to you. So just bad luck for the uh, Travis. I mean the uh, yeah trust me, Travis team and uh, Gandalito will pick up a second goal from the open goal. He will indeed. Let's see if they're going to have. Well, they should have enough time getting back to the halfway line for another throw in in this uh, <clears throat> second chucker. There it is. Ball's released. Picked up by Vecchellino for Travieso. Takes it across to uh, Juan Martin Nero. Now the Nero over on the boards. Sends it back into that uh, danger zone. And there is Pierres. Not quite able to pick that one up. Good bit of defense here from uh, Aspen Valley. All courtesy of uh, Juan Martin Zubia. Into the corner they go. <clears throat> Clears it nicely. And that's going to be a nice pickup here by Pancho. I was going to say Ben Sedon. Everybody overrides. Calle, the powerful under the next shot. Looking for Tomacho. Pierres. Uh, but I think we had it now. We ran out of time. Just running out of time. So one goal to two, two goals to one. We'll have a short break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
right. Welcome back, everybody. Um, tight one. And uh, like you said, a very open, very open game. One of the most open running games yeah. we've seen. And both teams, as I said, full four-player rotation um, happening here with these teams. Everybody getting involved. And I don't know much of an edge, really. I don't know which way to lean here. Yeah, no. it looks to me pretty even, you know. There's going to be, uh, well, they had a couple penalties, uh, 5A and a 4. And Pipe went for the 5A from about 80, yeah. almost put it in, and then just off to, but just off the left of both shots. And now will keep it at 3-2. to two. Aspen Valley, and then away we go. On the move. Look at this. Nice little deep pass. Now then, can he keep it in play? A little, uh, yeah, he's going to flick it in on the inside. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Just timed it perfectly. Yeah, not an easy shot on the left on the left side and uh, full speed to time that play. But this is uh, how you do it. Gonna put his man out the right side. Tamacho's there, and you no, know, that's Tamacho's gonna push him to the near side there. And I'd, I'd be interested to, to to ask Juan Martin on that if he would prefer next shot or if he would go to that near side shot. You know, because that just looked like money right there. It did. Yeah, you know. I mean, he went that way for sure because Tamacho pushed him. But I, I wonder if you choose that. To ask him about that. Turn around, picked up here by Gondolito. And uh, going up there, you might have seen Pensadon moving up uh, towards that goal post. We've got goal mouth. Seal Gonzalito out to the left. Uh, not sure that's going to reach uh, Zubia. No, it's going to be intercepted by the Tangola. Juan Martinero. Aspen Valley at the moment here in the lead by two goals. Kaye, a uh, little under the next shot. And uh, Nero is still there. Nicely done from Pierres to Zubia. Juan Martin stops, turns. Has a little look. Uh, wants to get past uh, Tamacho Pierres and he will steal the ball, given half a chance. Nero getting a bit of pressure there from... Uh, Pierres tries to steal it there on the near side. Ben Sedan not able to get away with it. Now then, Pipe Vecellino, the man he was just talking about, again takes a shot from just beyond the halfway line. Looking for Calle. He wasn't there. Tomacho, what's his stick in the essay? That should have been my line. Nero, advantage given. Nero faking two shots on goal. And now Ben Sedon immediately turning his focus on that last play. <clears throat> yeah, play the advantage here. They both players want a foul. Wanmer says, no problem, I'm going to move it down. Take it forward, one in front, one in back. And come together. How much room for Wanmer team to move there? Now, uh, they, lost, they lost their challenge, Aspen Valley. So they're just going to have to <clears throat> roll with it. Penalty two. Open goal about mm, eight yards, ten yards. You can see the 30-yard line back yep, there a yep. little bit. So they're going to go from the spot on the open goal. Pipe Vecellino. No problem, Pipe. That's only his first goal. Yeah. He had opportunities. You know, I remember he'll get gets warmed up. He was top five penalty shooter. <clears throat> Maybe top three last year. And he's been sensational this year. So, open goal. Look at this. Tony's going to get a breakaway here. He's got Tamacho on the inside. Oh, Tomacho that's a Piedis. great, yeah, yeah, great pass. Great pass from uh, Kaye. And Tomacho, oh, back to Kaye. Oh, he did well. He did very well indeed there, did uh, Anthony Kaye. And uh, he also picking up his first goal of the game. Yeah, Tony Yippie Kaye is going to get out in front here. And I love how he keeps working here. Look at it because he notices he's got to go to the other side. But watch him pick up the man right here. Stay in yep. there. Keep yep. pushing Ponzo wide. Check his shoulder. He knows he's got Juan Martin behind him. Well done. Great play. Great play. And uh, well done, Tomacho. 
because he that was just power polo at his finest, pushing tail across. But Tony keeping the going there. Remember, we talk about that second and third player so big in this game. So things started to heat up a little bit now. Four goals apiece. Vipi Vecellino. And you can see Tomacho going up. Vecellino on the near side. Couldn't control it. Another sh great pass here from uh, Calle. He was uh, eyeballing uh, Tomacho Pieres. He will... Uh, yeah, I thought he was going to try and keep that ball in play. Just running out of polo ground. And um, wouldn't be surprised if that uh, brings us to our courtesy change. Yeah, and you see the flags. I was actually out there this morning. I went by the field. And uh, wind blowing from the south east. And it's blowing. So running to that north goal, definitely easier. Remember, this field runs north and south. Good shot here. Tony, you get a good shot of his helmet right there. And close ups here. Pretty cool. Casablanca. Any design? How you want to design, right? Mm -hmm. Ian? Yeah, well, I saw them yesterday, the uh, the new set of uh, uh, Grand Champions Polo Club uh, 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 baseball caps. Oh, course. yeah. Really Robert nice. and. Uh, Very nice. Steven got it, got it going on. Yeah. And, uh, of course, it's nice to see the. Boys, they were all in town. Yeah, Sunday, of course, uh, on uh, every Sunday at uh, Grand Champions Polo Club, you can pick up a really cool uh, uh, baseball cap here. The new. Uh, you the got new the merch going yeah, on out yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Pick up some merch. Everything. I think they have everything, right? They have all the Grand Champion, all the yeah. uh, Aspen Valley. Correct. Santorita. And uh, all the merch. So make sure you keep an eye out for the merch tent again on Sunday. And once again, we're just going to keep reminding you. Wheelie Polo, remember, because it does happen after the the uh, trophy presentation. Yep. So I think some people might be tuning out a little bit, or they might come back on for the trophy presentation, or they're, or they're watching the trophy presentation now, but it take, comes on after that, and the games have been fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> they got the new, they got the rule book organized. They're out there, so they uh, keeping the, the teams are starting to grow, and wow, man. They just, the speed at these kids. Speed is crazy. Um it was it was just unbelievable. Um, well, that I think also very much plays a big role there in, in, in this new generation of of, uh, of uh, polo. They get the practice oh. all the time. Oh, yeah. incredible! And incredible. remember, at that speed, they can they can they can literally. I mean, the wheel does I think some of them twenty five thirty. Yeah. So and they're very safe, of course. Or the rules. That's why the rules have been put in place. Um, <clears throat> they did a fantastic job with that, and you definitely needed the level of control as this game grows. I mean, we saw it yesterday at the PTF, you know, uh, young little Merlos, the way he played. Now, they were all, I've seen them all on the wheelie. But I think uh, if you have the chance to uh, to actually get uh, going on a wheelie, it's going to make your game on a horse later on so much better. Yeah, and, and also the, the safety. Yeah. Because they yeah. actually play that safer because they're not allowed to ride each other off. Nope. So that that gives them that thought of, that that thought we're in polo for safety of the four leg. It's all going to work together. It's great to see. Keep that in mind. We're going to keep reminding you all week long up to Sunday. Here we go. Yeah, over to the boards. Picked up uh, by Pierres. The pass coming from Pierres, but of course to Macho uh, playing for uh, uh, Travieso and uh, Gonzalito for uh, Aspen Valley in front of goal. Now then, <coughs> Kaye, did he get the last touch on that play? Um, I was saying, sure, it might have been, we'll have to take a look at this. Could be Teo, but what a pass. I think Pancho, right? Yeah, <clears throat> Pancho's going to just take his time here. Look at how he lean, gets that ball in between. Well done, Teo, yeah. Or actually, no. but Teo taking out taking out Tamacho. So that's going to give Gondolito the opportunity for the finish. Good teamwork. Very good teamwork. Five goals to four then. And as you said, Dale, really nothing in it here between these two teams. Very, very close, very evenly matched. As uh, back to the 10 goal of Juan Martin Nero. Pierres has to uh, allow some space. Yeah. Doesn't want to get caught for negative or delay of game here. We've not seen that, I think, uh, once yet so far this season, have we? Not, yeah, I was going to say the whole season. Yeah. I don't think they have. No. Yeah. The players, it's been. And that's, you got to give applause to the players. 
I mean, it's all based based on the polo. They control the speed. They control the plays. So um, it's been, and that's been great to see. So that ball coming from Vecchellina up to Nero, and uh, he's going to try and feed that one nicely to uh, to Tony Kaye. Great defense once again by Aspen Valley as they turn things around here now, right in front of their own goal mouth. Zubia along the boards. Yeah, in comes the challenge from Nero. <clears throat> Umpire there just uh, probably telling the players to clear to allow that plate to be made. If anything, before delay a game, I think you might see blocking first yeah. again. And now, remember the procedure. Umpire's going to come in here. Once they shut it down, <clears throat> and he's going to say, clear. And yeah. you got players yeah, yeah. in front and behind. Nothing. So... And one player holding them up, and then another player. But they'll see here. They they might have they, they have their challenge in place. So one minute they might use it. You know, take a look. Also give an opportunity, like we saw yesterday. It was that I think uh, pilot. Yeah. Like a minute left, yeah, yeah. and it was a, it was a it was dicey play, but I I think it was more the opportunity to get the, some horses changed. For so Kundo when it had used it. <clears throat> a good time to use it. So you are going to get the uh, riding in from behind, blocking riding in from behind. And here we go. Quickly taken penalty from the spot. And uh, yeah, didn't quite get the touch. Kaye, nicely done. You can see uh, Pierre is coming in from behind. Again, picked up now by Ben Sedon. Tries to send that one back into the danger zone. He's got Nero on his hip. We are down to the last 30 seconds. You can see the clock in the background there. So five goals to four. Can Trafieso pick up the equaliser in the last 20 seconds? A big miss there. And uh, that backhander deflecting. And uh, Zubia, yeah, he might just get caught out there. Unlucky for him. And that will bring us to the end of the first half. And uh, be interesting to see because they should be relatively similar here. Those half-time stats. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with you, Yan. Should have pretty, uh, as they go down the line, take a look at them. Well, shots on goal, a bit more here by Travieso. That's your difference. Yeah. And actually down by a goal. So Travieso just needs to probably work on a few uh, just just better shots, but they are getting the opportunities. All right, we'll send everybody off and uh, get organized with our coaches and team in their uh, tents, and we'll be back for our second half of the World Pole League, Palm Beach Open. My name is Nacho Estrada. I'm from Argentina, eight goals. Hilario Figueras, five goals from Argentina. My name is Martin Jauregui. Um, my handicap is six goals. I'm from Argentina. Silvestre Navillo, and I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Tomás Pérez from Argentina, and I'm six goals. Francisco Spinacci, and I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Juan Bolini, and I'm a three goal polo player right now, but it could be eight. And uh, I'm from Argentina. I know, actually, now I'm American. No, here is a, it's amazing, the view, the, the fields, everything is uh, super nice. question is what I don't like about Aspen. I think I like everything about Aspen. Uh, the weather, the field. Right now in the summer, I would say it's the best club in the world. Friendship, the, the people, the, the scenery, everything. Eh? This is my seventh year coming in a row and I feel like I'm at home right now. So me and the family were around like, like we know the place for a long time and, and we enjoy the summer a lot. When I come here uh, winter and summer, I actually like Aspen more in summer. There's more stuff to do. All the mountains around here, like it's a pretty nice place and it is nice to play because they are very good horses and I play with a lot of friends. No, I like the polo, the horses and the people. I like to do mountain biking and 
to go to the lake. Yes, going to the lake, uh, stay here in the barn, everything. This look amazing, it's my first time here, but uh, all the, the, the things they, they're doing today is, is amazing. So I'm gonna be uh, enjoy, and I appreciate you to, to inviting me to be here in the, in the season. Christmas in July, uh, kids are kids are always looking forward for it. The day they come to Aspen, they know they they related with Christmas in July. It's an extra that they have here. I like Christmas in July because we like get all together and we receive a lot of presents. Welcome back, everybody. My Grand Champions Polo Club, field number three. Good look at the Aspen Valley team. Teo Calle, Pancho Benzedon, Godlita Piedras, Juan Martin Zubia. And there's your Trevieso team. Tony Calle, Tamacho Piedras, Pipe Versalino, and Juan Mar Nero. Five to four, uh, Aspen Valley. I want to take this time, uh, Yan, to just to give a big shout out to a very close friend of ours here, CTV Sports, and a very... Uh, well, 
the matriarch in the Kai family, Carolyn. Mm-hmm. She loves the sport pole. She loves uh, this. She, she loves watching when, of course, her son Teo and her grandson Tony are playing. So I want to be, give a big shout there. Every time she's at the field, she comes over and gave us have luck used to come over to say so Taylor, we miss you and we yes. want to thank you for uh, tuning in I had, I had to do I got to do that she just loves the game Apollo uh, I did uh sorry about that I, I said the wind was blowing from the south my apologies Jan and everybody else they're blowing from the north I, I looked at the flag thought it was so actually running this way right now to the south where Pepe's hitting so he might go for this two-pointer here Jan he's got the wind behind him oh look at this look at this look at this wow Wow. Now, wow. Did wow, that wow, touch wow. anybody? Yeah, I think it did. Did can Tony push it along? Yeah, I think there was a touch there. So had that gone through, it would have not counted as a two-pointer, but still an absolutely A for effort there for uh, Pipe Vecchellini. You can see he was definitely going for it. Let's have another look at this here. And, uh, yeah, it definitely changed and then saved on the line. So it would have been a one-pointer, but, would, but yeah. nice try, Pipe. Yeah. yeah. And remember, the wind is blowing towards that, so we might see some other opportunities are you know especially when it gusting really helps out a lot and uh and you can see the flags out there the wind is uh yeah now i got them on the bigger deck so look at the smallest it's my, it's my apologies i, I thought it, I, I was out there and <laughs> this morning i went by the field and i thought it was blowing the other way but my apologies i got uh, our field side correspondent to correct us there we're at ctv sports a little bit to the northeast from the northwest. Signor Vecellino, absolutely 100%. That is his um, second goal from the line. I think maybe a bigger, but not that even you get the uh, go running with the wind, but it's running into the wind. God, everyone wears goggles these days, so that doesn't work. But I remember when he didn't wear goggles, I mean, your eyes would pool. You oh. Know? You know, it is running, right? And then it always seems faster. Of course. <laughs> you know, when you're running, it just kind of slows down a bit when you're... <clears throat> so, uh, they'll bowl in from the far side. International rules, tournament conditions here. Second half, Zubia. On the move. Oh, yes, look at this. Big, big monster shot, but uh, not quite the angle that he was hoping for. It'll just trickle over that back line. And they're shooting the ball. If that's one thing we've seen a lot this year too yes. i think compared to other years yeah just shooting the ball outside the 60 to yes. yard line yeah and uh, not only that but something also which i think is uh, we need to note is is the uh the uh, the passing the the precision of the passing has been uh, not only uh stellar mm -hmm. but it's also been um yeah something which clearly all the players here in the world polo league uh, I've had to come accustomed to because so often we talk about that one-touch polo where, and Mark uh, Gans has been a good example of that when he's had a couple of balls sent to him and uh, one going, touch, one yeah. touch, yeah, Bang, one touch yeah. polo and the yeah. speed of the game. Well, it speeds the game up because, like Alejandro was saying, Estrada when he was their special guest, he yeah. really, he really jumped on that. Ball moves faster than the horses. Yeah, so let it move. <clears throat> so five goals apiece. Change of possession. First uh, goal of the second half coming there by uh, Signor Vecellino. Uh, still very hard to gauge here who's got the slight advantage or the upper hand. Both teams are very evenly balanced. Remember, both of these teams coming in off 26 goals. A lot of respect for each other, of course. Um, but uh, it's uh, going to have to produce a winner and a runner-up, that's for sure. I also got to say, Dale, that uh, I think uh, Tony Kaye here for Travieso uh, doing a very good job. I'm sure Taya will be very proud of uh, how his uh, his offspring is playing here. A little bit of a halt on the halfway line. Two players come together with Juan Martin Zubia, number four, in the white helmet. Keep an eye on him right here. It looks like Tomacho and Virtually, you know, they're going to come. Right here, it takes him out a little bit in front. Very similar play. I mean, you got to stay consistent. Remember the play earlier when exactly it was actually yeah. the opposite. Yeah, uh, Juan Martin was in a little bit in front, and yeah, yeah. They, they challenge when they use their challenge. 
So, you know, that's a very consistent call with the way they called it. Berkeley you know, kind of coming in and getting, even though he's shutting down, he kind of getting him in front. <clears throat> and, uh, but right there at the center in that gray area, 20 yards, either way. So they're going to move this to the 60. First penalty four of the day here for the uh, Aspen Valley team. And it'll be Juan Martinez will be able to do the honors. Ooh, hit it well. Yeah. Just, but then again, that could be that wind playing a little role in that play. Yeah, it's blowing. That ball looked like it went by there quickly. On the knock in, Wanma. Out to the left hand side. Looking for and finding Pipe Vecellino. Still Vecellino cuts in across now. Oh, a little bit of a miss hit. Able to correct himself. He got very lucky there. I think he was trying to send it out to the left hand side. There was definitely a player there from Traviesa waiting for that ball. And uh, this is how quickly they can lose it. Now then, Ben Sedon going up the field. Here comes the pass. I'm guessing that is for Mr. Ben Sedon. Oh, it shows you how the wind that wind is blowing because he definitely was passing that ball to Poncho. And Poncho had great position on the defender there. And here's a shot of Poncho. Looks like he's checking the bridle out. See there, double bridle they call that, where you have the two bits. Yeah. Smaller Burdoon, and that's where your draw rein and the hooks of the saddle will hook. And then the next bridle right there, the gray pony, the gag with the big ring. But you can see there, that's a Pelham bit. He uses a curb chain. If you're new to the game and new to any of the sport, good shot here at tail. Just to disturb leathers to another uh, height. <clears throat> On the courtesy change. Yeah, great job here. Poncho pushes his man wide. I think Juan Martino was trying to drop that ball in, but just carried on him. He, very easy swing. Just uh, shot it off the field. So we've got the uh, Travieso uh, team down in the north end zone and the Aspen Valley team today in the south end zone for this uh, on field three. And it looks like uh, the Travieso team here is going to come back on a team team uh, chat on the way out. Because we've been noticing that. A lot of discussion. Well, that's important. Teams are though. using it. Yeah. Use, they're using it correctly because, remember, you got to keep that courtesy chain going also. Yeah. Yeah. You know, based on the timing. Um you know, like I said, anywhere between the 45 seconds to a minute. It's only six minutes still in the game, based in, in the uh, – but just to keep the day – so the teams understand as a member's timeout for the horses. No, so, I think it's also important for the team, as you said, you know, to have a little huddle uh, for the captain to uh, to uh, dispatch certain uh, uh, yeah. ideas or strategies or, you know, sticking to the game plan. Or it, gives you a, it gives you a true break. Yeah. A lot of times in the adrenaline rush of the game, you know, it can be a little more difficult to get everybody together at the same time. We saw it yesterday. They used it a lot, Pilot and, and Maltese Falcons. And they were, I mean, huddling up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we actually used the analogy of football, <laughs> how they're called plays, and it almost looked like they were doing that. And uh, here we go. We got everybody back on the field, and it's going to be Nero. Out to the right-hand side to uh, Vecellino. You have that one touch again, you see. Just gets himself in the perfect situation. Kaye, not able to pick this one up. It will be Juan Martin Zubia, but he's got traffic coming in. Well done, Kaye. Tony Kaye, but now Ben Sedon. Pancho. Slightly topped it. He's going to have to leave that one behind. In comes Tomacho. Sends it back out to the... Well, towards those boards. Nero. We'll pick it up. Little chip shot for uh, Vecellino. Unlucky, but he's got uh, Kaye there to pick up uh, the pieces. Well done, Tony Kaye. 
Kaye! Oh. He got a last piece. Oh, he got a last touch. <clears throat> yeah, worked it in there nice. and But uh, Juan Martin, number four right there, staying, blocking that, that goal mouth. I'm making it easy for Tony, keeping him out on the, on the next shot. And the deeper you get to that end line, the more narrow that goal gets. So a good defensive stand here by the blue, Aspen Valley. Rubia. What's he got up his sleeve? Pierre is tucks in behind. To Vecellino, look at that. Nicely done. Now you don't want to have a Traviesa player to uh, pick up that ball. Out of the air. Benzadon. Nicely tucks it. Well, I was going to say, tucks in behind. So that your man's not in front and on his own. Zabia now will take the ball off Pierres, and he's got a little a bit of a passageway to run towards goal. But again, he's this is uh, what we were talking about, uh, Tomacha, and also uh, Pipe Vecellino working very hard. Little bump and a ride off. Ben Sedon sends it back. Intercepted by Zubia. And a breakaway play now for Gonzalito Pierres. Yeah. Cousin uh, Tomacho able to get the ball back to uh, Pipe Pecellino. Now then, will he go and run this one himself? He's got to outrun Ben Sedon, and that's not easy to do. But uh, there's always uh, that young man with the number two on his shirt, I believe it was, Tomacho Pierres. Yeah, to get the breakaway coming here, and it looks like it's Pipe, no? Pipe gets around. Yeah, beg your pardon. You're right. Finish. Yeah, the gray mare has some foot. All right, now to click us down. Man, Pancho, I hope he, he doesn't look like he's have to check him out. He might. They might want to check Pancho out. Or we'll see. Because remember, he had an injury, but it looks like he's kind of he was kind of looking back there. All right. Well, that's what we'll be. Uh, we'll right up. We'll make sure that everybody's okay and uh, great goal there by Virtually No, and we'll be uh, we'll be right back. When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players field side and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. If anything goes on or near a horse, you're likely to find here in our store. We still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players.
Welcome back, everybody. Great to have you with us here. CTV Sports. We are at uh, Grand Champions Polo Club field number three for the sixth match of the Palm Beach Open. And as uh, Dale and I have been saying throughout this broadcast, it's been uh, a very, very uh, open game, a very good game. And uh, I believe, Dale, we have a substitution? No, we don't? No, I'm saying he's okay. Oh, he's okay. Oh, good. Thank you. Pancho Bensadon, who we feared because of uh, an earlier injury he sustained um, during the week, might not have been able to come back out. But we're delighted to say that Pancho is back out. As uh, you join us now for the penultimate chaka, just, uh, and that's been the case throughout this game, just one goal in it here between these two teams. And uh, this young man uh, now coming up very strong here at the beginning of chaka number five, Tomacho Pierre is picking up his second goal. Remember, he scored in the second chaka. Yeah, pretty pass by uh, Wanma. I mean, just perfect. <clears throat> and again, you see that footage there already running. I mean, that's his pole of perfection. Before the ball hits, being hit, Tomacho's already on the fly. Well, that is uh, all very much part of what they teach you as well. They don't just teach you how to hit a ball and ride a horse, but it's also the reading of the game and then, of course, getting yourself in that right situation and position. So the uh, reading and the understanding and the, uh, the vision uh, that you need to have in this game, because remember, it's a four-man team sport, is uh, everything that's taught you, of course, also here at the Polo School. Uh, remember, Dale, you mentioned it. Uh, Kel Newman, our director, our polo manager, happy to sort you out. And of course, Juan Bellini, very active and a very, very big advocate for pushing the development of the polo school. Which reminds me, this afternoon, of course, we have our, our second uh, WPL game coming up this afternoon. Uh, it'll be Casablanca up against uh, Park Place. And then uh, after big that... Big game, huh? Big game. Well, they're all big game, but that's another one. And then after yes. that, it is Tuesday afternoon, Sunset Chuckers uh, over at uh, Grand Champions Field number one. So come and join us. It's always a pleasure. It's been absolutely great, uh, the turnout that we've had every Tuesday, uh, which reminds me that uh, from Sunset Chucker to Sunset Polo, Friday the 22nd, which is this Friday, Dale, if you haven't got your tickets, make sure you get yourself your tickets. It's... Uh, like it has been in the last few years, it's always a sold-out event. Oh, yeah. Some surprise acts. Uh, can't tell you who that is. I'd have to shoot you if I did. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no. I don't even know. They I don't have tell no me. I, they don't I, tell me anything. I don't, I have, I don't we know. We talk for a living. Why would they tell us? <laughs> I agree with them not telling me. I don't want to know. I always like being surprised. But it was awesome. 50 last year. Yeah. Okay, so trigger trigger here to check out the safety. Mm -hmm. And penalty six. And defending team hits it over their own land line. We use the analogy a lot, like soccer, where you have a corner kick. And uh, actually, in Argentina, or where Spanish-speaking uh, countries, they, they actually called a corner mm -hmm. on the polo field. But it is hit from the 60-yard line, no further than 40 yards from the center. If the ball was hit out by the boards, it goes out of bounds. And based on the one approach, one hit, because it used to be able to dribble the... Uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, but it, it was kind of dangerous. It was a great uh, you know, procedural change because you know, have everybody in there blocking and a guy taps it 20 yards you know, and then fires. So it's, it was getting, it was better. This is cleaner. Ooh, Oh, now very close. Very close indeed. That might even be a trigger. We'll see, it's close. <laughs> see if they... They get where they got that one, but they might look at that one also as close as that one was. <clears throat> and uh, so, and also there's some uh, basic uh, some procedure. Remember, if the dud ball, if you ball hits off, the defending team hits it off the goalpost or hits it off the board, it's still a safety. Hits it off their own horse, but if it hits it off another team's horse, no. But if they hit it off their own, yep. then you still a safety. And. Uh, we had a question here today that said to me, what do you call, what do you do? I'll ask you, yeah, where, what, what's the next play on, on a, well, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it when we got a little time. I just had a viewer send me some after a game and they're asking a question, which, yeah, it's kind of nice as he's seeing some of the seat for viewers uh, send in some questions on procedural parts of the game. Here we go. I'll let pass 
Juan uh, Zubia to Gandalito. Pierres changing direction once again. That rotation now seems to also working very well here with Aspen Valley. He's going to run this one. Look at that. Pierres versus Pierres. The two cousins battling it out. Vecellino, yeah, he got a very small piece of it. Sends it to the boards. First one there will be Tomacho. And he will try and tee or lay this one up for uh, Nero. Back to Juan Martin Zubia. Taking the scenic route around over the over on the far side, up against the boards. Now then, gets a little bit of support from uh, Pierres. There he is, takes the ball off him. Bensadon going up. Now also Juan Martin Zubia going up. Again, a little cleverly placed uh, chip shot here. Zubia. Yeah, I was going to say he must be in range from there. And Bensadon to pick up that loose ball and Benza Don picks up a goal for Aspen Valley his second yeah second goal of the game here Pancho uh, Zubia and ooh tail was actually was hitting the tail and again lined out very well Pipe was in the middle and actually bounced off the pony and then Pancho so uh, Juan Martin had a few options there and again good spacing by the Aspen Valley team. Pancho picks up the second goal today. So that brings them back within one goal. We are in the fifth chucka. Nero working it on the boards. Bensadon behind him, just waiting for a, a chance to uh, to challenge the ten goaler. Miss hit. And Bensadon will be happy to pick up that ball. Well, he got lucky. Nero will get another chance. Bensadon now sticking with him. Needs to allow that little bit of space when they're on the boards to get away from the boards. Vecellino anticipating a pass. There it comes. And uh, Tomacho near side backhand in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. Tomacho third goal of the day. Second here in the fifth chucker. Now they're going to you have something going on before. Let's see. Juanma. Oh, does he come across right there? Yeah. Any possibility. Nice, nice neck shot. I and mean, a nice back shot. And we'll see what they decide. They might say enough time. Maybe say no, but. Uh, going to the courtesy change. So we'll check with our. Did uh, look very tight. Did look very close. Yeah, we'll, look, we'll check with our instant replay official on this. Might might be taking it to center if they did have a foul, as uh, tail was right in line there. Another shot of Poncho. <clears throat> so um, yeah, looks like they're going to carry this ball to center. So unlucky, unlucky, but tight. Good call. Moving from right to left, yeah. to Macho. Yeah. If he's, if he, I think if he goes easy, if he's lying, I don't know if he had time to do it. If he is, uh, goes on the right away a little bit more than coming across just because that gap got closed again. Remember the window, always looking at the window. So they got to go for it here. I think they got that one maybe on the other side of the line. So they'll get a get a call out to the umpires on that. If they have maybe they haven't teed it up yet. Sometimes it gets a little can be a little confusing because you hit the you hit the you hit the knock in with the ball on the field. So when you hit your penalty shots, they either have them on the line or or in front. Or I mean on the line or or, or just behind the line. Of course, for the two pointer, you got to go behind the line. But uh, Zubia's going to go ahead and, and use a control play here. And, I, and we see that a lot in, in the tight games, which I agree. Also, remember, hitting into the wind. Whew, yeah, yeah. That's tough. Tough, tough, tough. I think that's a great, says smart, uh, very smart play here by Juan Martin. Here we go. Picked up again by Gonza. And uh, he's running into some traffic. Ben Sedon will say, thank you. I'll take this off you. Nero coming in for the challenge. Now then, Tomacho Pierres. 
Will he mm. get caught out a second time by just coming across? Talked about that window. Yeah. Look for the look for the the overlap. Here's Poncho. Yeah. And no, they'll they'll take a look. Did did Wanmar have position also? Could you have Juan Martin? I think that's why Tamacho went to take that one. You know, could you have Juan Martin pushing him? Is he winning the is he winning the ride off or not? Umpire in a really very good spot. This is another positioning play we we talk about now. Both teams do have their challenges here. So they might they might challenge this and see what happens. But remember, you have a couple different options there. Does Wamar have enough position on him? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe maybe not. But if he does, then that's okay for Demacho. Uh Window is there a little more of a window, which is on a tight play in this league, on the level of horses and players. Of course, remember the tight. It can be very tight. Um, so they'll look at that, and they'll break all this down though. And remember that. that uh, fast, medium, slow, speed, and frame by frame. Yeah, yeah. The frame by frame is awesome for the for the instant replay official. And uh, so look, they're gonna say, okay, okay. So trigger on the play, no foul. So they triggered the play. So this were definitely, and I like this. This uh, this is another good trigger here. One umpire saw one way, one saw the other, and that's another. It's a play that you heard everything I told you could be going on. Yeah, yeah. And remember, they're making that, they're making that call. Uh, <laughs> You know, spur of the moment. Spur of the moment. And there's a lot going on there because that, a, a lot of that play was, does Walmart have the space? Yeah. No, or, or just the connection. Or the, yeah, or yes, the, yeah. So yeah. on the bump, because they could be they could be still kind of overlapped a little bit. And, and yeah. you know what I mean? And, and one. So good, great call. That's where you have the bowl in there. Great teamwork by the umpires. And away we go again. A little backhand attempt, not uh, hit cleanly to Macho. Behind him, in comes Kaye. But uh, Aspen Valley and uh, Juan Martin Zubia. Now then, Ben Sedon again going up. Takes it round towards the boards. Has a little look. Where is Ben Sedon and where is Kaye? Well, a little bit of a miss hit, and that will be, oh, not really. I was going to say, Tamachi was going to steal that one off uh, Zubia. Working very hard now, taking on the man from Chile. Now Tamacho comes out on top. Again, just waiting for that uh, for that right moment for the challenge. And, uh, oh, unlucky bouncing ball there for Virgilino. Stopped and turned on their own back line, Pierres. Not hitting it cleanly. Has to chase his own ball. Open backhand from Nero. Again, a deflection. Yeah, well, this time Pierre is appealing, saying, Surely that must have been my line. Umpire says, Play on, boys. And that's what they do. Kaye. I like the non call. I think uh, Gonz is either going to go near side on it, as Wanmar was there pretty quick. Taking it, taking it forward, but it'll end up in a knock-in. And it might manage the clock here a little bit to maybe return for the fifth, sixth chucker. We'll see if they still have time on the field. Yeah, and, and well done <clears throat> by Zubia. Going to manage the clock, so he's going to return on uh, for the sixth chucker with a knock-in for Aspen Valley. You don't want to miss our sixth and final chucker. We'll be right back. CTV Sports.
another great season. We had a blast this year, a great fields again. They keep getting better and better. And we got lucky with the rain this year and uh, had a lot of fun polo. There's nothing better than being out here in Aspen, playing with these great people, amazing views every day. I mean, how could you ask for more? Best part about being out here in Aspen for the polo is the fields, the community, Melissa and Mark, the great competition, and, uh, and the amazing horses, and how the horses enjoy being out here. I love the town, I love the valley, I love also spending time here in Carbondale. Um, so I just love this place in general. I have a lot of friends, I've made lots of friends over the years. The Gansis has have created a spectacular place here. Uh, that has become a really important summer destination for polo in America. Aspen, I love it there. Our family's around, a ton of horses, a ton of golf, and a lot of fun polo. So. Welcome back, everyone. Here we go then, the must, uh, much anticipated sixth and final chucker of uh, this very, very close and exciting game, Aspen Valley. Currently on the score sheet with six uh, goals and uh, Traviesa with seven. Remember, Aspen Valley uh, losing their opening match in the Palm Beach Open to Audi by 10 to 15. Desperate to pick up their first win. Traviesa wanting to keep a clean slate or a clean sheet, however you look at it. And uh, <clears throat> with that one goal, which has been the case throughout this game, except for the first chuck and when uh, Aspen Valley led by two goals to nil. Uh, but then very quickly, Travieso came back. Uh, it was uh, three goals to two still for Aspen Valley, five goals to four for Aspen Valley at the end of the first half. And then the switcheroo came around. Travieso took control, scoring two goals, two unanswered by Aspen Valley. And that's when they took the lead, six goals to five. And uh, they've just uh, keep, kept it at a goal apiece uh, in Chaka number five, which is where we end up now with seven goals to six in favor of Traviesa. So, six and final Chaka. Dale, we've been contemplating who might have a slight upper hand or an, uh, an edge here. Hard to tell, but uh, we like to always have our little... Yeah, I don't... I'm, I'll let this one go. This They're so, <clears throat> so even. I mean, anybody's game, I think a lot of it's going to be, you know, just timing too. Maybe... You can see the, the, the tent um, and the flags blowing there. So you are getting now a uh, little tougher running to that north goal right here where Aspen is. They're, they're going to the control play, and that's why. You see, look at the jerseys there. You see. So timing in the game here, Yan, of headed heading towards that south goal is just going to be big, you know, where it ends up in the game. And it's been nip and tuck goal, you know, one goal difference the whole way through. You just went over it, so... We'll see which team gets the benefit of the doubt. On the move, picked up here and controlled by the Aspen Valley team. Yeah, and uh, they, I'm pretty sure, Dale, are going to be very offensively minded here. They have to be. They're down by one. <coughs> As I say, they do want to win their first game here in the uh, the Palm Beach Open. Kaye, Tony. See, here's a good example. Yeah, and you saw the, the team running into the win was using the short passes. And the team that had the winner is going right to the hit and run. So, again, Aspen Valley find themselves deep in their own half. Keep an eye on that clock. Top left-hand uh, corner of your screen. Good run here by Zubia. And that could be a perfect pass here for Kaye. Teo Kaye just getting beat or being beaten there by uh, Tomacho Pierez. And Vecellino, he doesn't need uh, asking once he gets that ball. That ball will go mm. over the side. Yeah, so we will have a change of possession. A little bit unlucky there. Yeah, cop on the pitch. And in their half, though, so they're not in a bad spot. It'd be really uh, very strong here for Aspen to be able to get a get a equalizer before the courtesy change, and then be going with the wind. So yeah. that would give they see that's what give them an advantage. So it's almost like you want to maybe see. Uh... Oh, what a steal! What a steal by Nero. Sent back by Pierez. 
Looking for Zubia, picked up by Ben Sedan. Yeah, you get the right away violation there. Yeah. We still have time, 5.02, before the Kersey change. And on the other hand, if, if, if the uh, WASO team was to be able to score with the wind, you know, and then maybe be able to get one early before they get again, they get back, they get that, that Kersey change because that's going to come into play here. Uh, the crazy change. <clears throat> Both teams still have their uh, challenges available. Also here for the sick chucker. And uh, this ball with the wind. So I think Pipe will probably go for it. And, oh, this is a huge shot. I mean, you really have to hit it well. I, it, I'm not sure how far it is behind, but it is behind the line. So you might, you might see what if he goes for it. Yeah, it's about eight yards behind. Tomacho, Nero, back to Tomacho. Oh, unlucky. Yeah, a little bit wrong footed there. Hmm. I think you're kind of getting gust too, so it's yeah. not as, not as, uh, but you can see right there, look at Juan Martin, his jersey when he's running into it. All right, it's perfect time. Because they're probably going to get about a minute here, and you're going to get a change. So let's see if Aspen Valley can get the equalizer. Lays it out to the boards. Richardina gets there before Pierre is done. Sends it down the boards, looking for Kaye. Be a read it well. Saw it coming. Got straight onto that. We'll leave that one for Gonzalito. Out to the left hand side. I think that had Ben Sedon's name written all over it. Kaye, well, oh, well done. Te Teo Kaye picking it up on the near side. Unlucky there on the rebound. As again, Vecellino able to put it out towards those boards. Ben Sedan coming in. <clears throat> Tomacho. And we have a whistle. Oh, they might get. Uh... What happens here? You might get a courtesy change. And they are going to get the courtesy change. Well, that gives us a chance, Dale, once again, to just remind everybody about what's happening this Friday. We spoke about the uh, Sunset Chuckers and Cocktails this afternoon. Mm. Well, the sixth annual Nick Roldan Sunset Polar White Party, one of the largest fundraisers uh, in Palm Beach County, hosted by Grant Gansey, takes place this Friday, the ultimate party under the stars. Roldan and Gansey are combining their love for philanthropy and polo to create an event that is unlike any other. It will combine polo, great uh, DJ music, and secret, secret performances uh, that we have not been uh, uh, informed as to who that are. Of course, the food and beverage, always a very, very important part of the fundraising here for local charities. Gansey is hosting this large-scale event benefiting the Sunset Polo International on Friday, the 22nd of March, as we said. Gates open at 5.30 and close at 11 p.m. at Grand Champions Polo Club. And just to remind you, that is the nation's largest polo club uh, and facility. Now, in case you were wondering what you can do, you can buy tickets, of course, ranging from $450 to $10,000. Donations are, of course, always uh, 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 welcome, and there's no limit on that. $450 includes entry to the event and an authentic Argentine asado dinner. $7,500 VIP includes a table for 10 people in the VIP stadium area hors d'oeuvres and authentic Argentine asado, plus many more benefits. Now, if you want to go for a $10,000 VIP, includes a table for 10 in a primary location right by the stage, Hors d'oeuvres and, of course, all the food and beverage you can throw at. Yeah, those are amazing. Yeah. And it's worth every, every. I mean, it's just amazing. Of course, everything on charity, it's uh, just a spectacular event. They've done uh, hats off to, to Nick and, and Grant. Worked so hard on this. And, of course, Gansey family. <clears throat> and, uh, but, very, we'll be there. Yeah, of course. And remember Can't the wait. sunset. Looking forward to it. Just important to just to finally add that Dale, the Sunset Polo International is a non-profit 501c3 mm -hmm. foundation, organised and operated as a charitable uh, grant-making organisation that supports projects. Here we go, back to the action. Don't want to uh, distract from uh, a very very important uh, part of this uh, match here. 
As you can see, the clock's ticking down, and we are still one goal between these two teams. Uh, let's see uh, if uh, Aspen Valley can find that much-needed equaliser. Ben Sedan on the move. Kaye sends it back. Picked up by... I was going to say, and he did get a piece of it, Vecellino. Little deflection coming off the pony there, I thought, of uh, Tomacho Pierez out towards the boards. Ah, and you can see there the look of despair on the face of Juan Martin Zabia. Let's have another closer look at what happened there. Down the field, bounce off a pony, quick line change. Crossover, picked up by Bunganza. Open back shot. Yeah, and, right there. And just bad luck. Again, almost getting out in front there. So, from the spot, and it'll be Juan Ma. I'm behind the center here, so they're going to get controlled. He's going to find them, uh, Pipe. And Pipe is going to find Kaye. Tony Kaye. Some matches up there as well with a lot of hands up in the air. And this is a, a big opportunity if it goes for the uh, Travieso team. Let's see where this ball... Looks like they were all bunched up there. I don't yeah. know if the one, yeah. Minchi, you might see a challenge on this. I would I mean, think, I would think, because I mean, just an interesting call. I mean, were those guys making contact, like pushing on each other? It looked, looked clean and if to it me. Were, if they were, then I don't know. So, well, they'll, they'll look at it. They'll slow down. Uh, big play, because if Travieso does win this one, they'll, they'll have an open goal. Um, and vice versa, like I said, if it goes... I don't know who they call who what how the hell they called it. Did they call the black pushing the, the blue across? Did they call the blue for blocking? So we'll see what they how they worked out because a number of things that were going on there, but there definitely was contact yeah, between yeah, yeah. the two two players and then the ball got kicked back. <clears throat> so a lot going on. And that oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so it was a trigger. So each team still has, has has another one of those plays, which you can see the umpire seeing it differently. And so they use a trigger there, which, again, I, I applaud. And no foul on the play. One player pushing him, kind of pushing him in there. So that's why the ball got kicked back. So you get a bowling. So a bit of an opportunity uh, advantage maybe for Travieso being right down there in front. And because of that, uh, Umpire is going to make sure he has a very clean bowl in here. Everybody's going to be working for position, as you can imagine. And here we go. Comes out the far end, picked up by Ben Sedon. And he will clear it very quickly. So now then, can Aspen Valley capitalize on this little win? Winning that ball right on their doorstep. And away we go. Kaye will tuck in behind. Yeah, and that's here. There he is. Comes in. Comes in from uh, from the boards. Vecellino. Inside forehand touch. Zubia. Still Juan Martin Zubia up against the young man from Chile. There he is, Vecellino. Ball is still in play. Aspen Valley on the move. Yeah, why not indeed try something a little bit different. Vecellino picks it up on his doorstep. Now, but did he put it over his own back line, Dale? Well, he might have. <clears throat> he could be getting the safety here. So uh, we'll see if it was already out or did he hit it out? I guess not. So it must have been already yeah. out. And so knocking coming. Juan Martin, Juan Ma. Towards the boards. Always looking for that number three. Pipe Vecellino. He'll extend it up to uh, Tomacho. Sent back by Zubia. Picked up by, well, now Ben Sedon. Pierre has left it. Everybody now going 
up towards that uh, Travieso goal. Nero coming in between. We're down within the last minute of play, Dale. It's uh, that now or never kind of time. Nero will uh, clear that ball as far downfield as he possibly can. Bercellino. Big shot. Kaye oh. against Kaye. Oh, nice back shot tail. Still Vecellino back to Tomacho. It didn't get in there in, in the nick of... Oh, well, with enough time, Zabia shuts him down. And well, the, the flag is raised. Yeah, but you, you're going to get... I, I think it's great not to call the first one. It looked like uh, Vecellino got in front. And they run out of time there. I don't think it's... I'm not sure if they had a foul there or not. Looks like they went in and put the goal up. So... We can check and see if they had a whistle there or not. I don't think the whistle, because the clock kept going, so no. That's been Tomacho. Yeah. So that'll be your, uh, get your eighth goal, so eight to uh, six. Not a great polo game. Uh, one unanswered goal. <clears throat> he went back, but, well, he had the two charge. He had the Aston Valley, had, had the four chucker and the fifth chucker, where um, Travieso had the one. Had the two unanswered goals in the fourth and then one in the sixth. That's probably the difference. Otherwise, um, very close. Yeah, very close game. And uh, congratulations to both teams. Uh, just showing a great 26 goal style. Let's see the final stats here. Big difference. Shots on goal. Trevier, so look at that. Is six more. Can give him a little bit more. Knock ins. Though they missed some goals, nine knock-ins compared to five. So Aspen Valley uh, actually yan with uh, better shooting percentages, but they, you know, the opportunities always help. And uh, so they're just at thank you guys and uh, yan. Any final words? Uh, a great game and a very kind reminder to uh, invite you to come and join us this afternoon for our second game. We have a double header, of course, in the World Polo League. Casablanca taking on Park Place. And that'll be on your screen, CTV Sports 3.30, followed by the Sunset Chuckers and Cocktails. For Yann Anik Frank, I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here at CTV Sports when I say thank you for making us leaders of polo broadcasting. And always remember here at CTV Sports, we love the polo.